Hello there, my fellow agents and acolytes, and welcome back to the loving embrace of the Emperor's Holy Inquisition. Today, we will be indulging in our third episode on the rather radical faction known as the Recongregators. Since we already talked about their history, their goals and their methods during the last couple of episodes, today I thought we should talk some more about some specific things, namely a couple of their secrets and the conspiracies associated with them. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Great and Holy Drossus warrior, visionary, saint, whose rise to greatness is the story of the birth of the Calixis sector itself. The history wrote in the seminaries across the sector tells about how Drusus came to the untamed stars and nebulae that would become the Calixis sector. He was just a general in the staff of Lord Militant Angevin in his crusade to carve out a new domain out of the void of the Calix expanse in the name of the Emperor. The stories tell of how the enemies of the Emperor sent terrible assassins against him, and how they dragged him down among the dead. But the Emperor, not accepting the death of his great servant, destroyed all his assailants and allowed Drusus to live again. His return from death remade Drusus, and from that day onwards, his story is one of triumph, brilliance, and inspiration. In the decades that followed, Drusus threw the enemies of humanity back, took command of the Angevin Crusade in the wake of the great Lord Militant's death, and forged the Calixis Sector by his will alone. There is, however, another story that is known in part by few and in entirety by none. It is a story bound by lies, so that even the great lords of the Ordos Calixis do not know where the truth begins and the lies end. They know only that it is made of both, truth and lies bound into a knot. It is the story of an old man of weakening health, and a mundane mind given command of a mighty crusade of virtue and blood in the favor of dusty tradition. Under his failing will and weak strategy, millions died for little gain, and the forces of the Imperium were shamed. It is said that among the Inquisition there were those unwilling to see this much blood spilled forever, who watched the pitiful scrabbling of a so-called crusade among dead stars and hateful worlds and decided it could not be allowed to continue. These mysterious watchers picked another one to be the Hand of Destiny, one with the will and personal power to forge humanity's future among the unforgiving reaches of space. These recongregators, it is said, made a deal with the darkest of powers so they could achieve their goals. If this is to be believed, it was they who saved Drusus and began the whisperings of his favor in the sight of the Emperor, and also they who wielded the knife that removed the old man and made space for the new one. The story says that the Calixus sector was born of their will, and that Drusus was not a saint of the Emperor's making, but at the hands of hidden powers who charged a heavy price for their aid. Others respond that if the future needs to be bought by a lie, then that is a small price to pay. I'm not sure about you, but this sounds more like Xanfite propaganda than anything else. The hands of recongregator agents are also filthy with the stinking blood of dire mistakes, which have been made while trying to wield Malfi as a tool for sector-wide change. However, the faction's manipulations of the bloodlines of the Malfian nobility remains its greatest work, and at the same time, their most dire shame. The nobility of Malfi was always rotten, ancient and wicked long before the coming of the Angevin Crusade. Since the rise of Scintilla as the dominant capital of the sector, the nobility of Malfi have become bitter and resentful. In this darkly brooding feud, the recongregators saw an opportunity to create a force for change in a sector becoming too comfortable with its newly acquired stability. The key, they felt, was in the old blood of Malfi, a lineage and stock with a vast history of scions great and terrible down the years. The recongregators saw in these dynasties a tool that they could use, and in doing so embraced a vile heresy long forbidden. With the aid of rogue elements in the Adeptus Mechanicus, 
a powerful recongregator cell poisoned members of several noble families with gene-locked viral agents that would release their potential by augmenting their genetic makeup and sowing the seeds of the same in the next generation. The intent of this manipulation was to breed a great line of charismatic and powerful individuals that could wrest the control of the sector away from a course doomed to stagnation. Matches between various infected bloodlines were engineered, and the resulting progeny were monitored over the years. The Bene Gesserit would be proud. Each generation was more changed than the last one, but, without warning, the experiment slipped away from their grasp. Records were destroyed, adepts were killed, and those inquisitors closest to the project were either disappearing or found dead. The ones responsible for this remain unknown to this day. As the years were progressing, it became apparent that the results were, unfortunately, not what was intended and far too late did the recongregators realize the grave error of their choices. They had unwittingly committed a vicious sin from humanity's ancient past. The products of Malfi's manipulated bloodlines were monstrous. Although they bore no marks of corruption or mutation, these men and women were near genius exemplars of cunning and viciousness. The names of those Malfian noble lines most affected ring now with infamy across the entire sector. Cinderfell, Belasco, and Koba. None outside the Inquisition know of this secret atrocity. The recongregators have taken great pains to cover up their sins over the years, and to combat the evil it has wrought. But even they cannot guess how many have been born of the tainted blood of Malfi. The nature of the recongregator philosophy spawns endless plots and endeavors, and the presence of a number of powerful recongregators in the Calixa sector means that it is teeming with manipulations and grand designs of change, many of which are inevitably stymied by inertia or thwarted by the machinations of other powerful factions. Chief among the concerns of the Calixian recongregators is the fate of seat of imperial power on Scintilla and many recongregators seek to thwart the activities and dominance there of their arch-rivals from the Amalafian faction of the Inquisition. By their very nature, recongregators tend towards working alone without coordination of like-minded peers. But the concentration of tradition and power draws the attention of the recongregators like moths to a flame. They devote special attention to the infiltration of the lucid court of Scintilla, and the circles of influence around sector governor Marius Hax. As the embodiment of imperial authority in the sector, Marius Hax is a disastrous ruler from the perspective of the recongregators, being both highly conventional and obsessed with the maintenance of order and imperial tradition. The fact that Hax's authoritarian regime and reasoned loathing of change seems to have drifted into paranoia and despotism is of critical concern. Desperate operations to destabilize Hax's power base among the planetary defense and enforcer armies of Scintilla have so far proved fruitless, while the sphere of influence around the Lord Sector has proven impenetrable to infiltration. A number of the recongregators are becoming increasingly desperate to loosen Hax's stagnating grip on the Sector, and have banded into a cell known to its hidden membership as the Lucid Concern. Though they have yet to determine a course for direct action, the lucid concern is united in the absolute belief that the longer Hax's rule is allowed to calcify into immobility, the more extreme the solutions that can and should be contemplated to end it. So far, the group has only been held back by the fear of accidentally destabilizing the entire sector in the process. The war that is fought against the stabilizing influence of Amalafian Inquisitors has been fought in the Calixis sector since the sector itself was founded. It has been a long and bitter struggle, in which the Amalafians have the upper hand at present. Just a thought here, but maybe because they have some more common sense. The conventional and the change-resistant rule of sector governor Hax, and the relative stability of imperial rule throughout the sector, has strangled any potential for change. While many of the recongregators focus on breaking Hax's power base, others have focused on more distant areas from Scintilla's influence. 
a key secret battlefield between agents of the Recongregators and servants of the Amalafians, is the feudal world of Acreage. Lone agents and hidden acolyte cells have thoroughly infiltrated the population and slowly began the spread of new ideas. With the groundwork laid, they have begun to smuggle advanced technology and weaponry into the hands of elements resistant to the rule of the High King there. In return for these manipulations, enforcement cadres trained by Amalafian acolytes root out the sympathizers of the new ideals and drag away rebellious elements. While the High King is watched over by bodyguards sent by the Amalafians within the Ordo's Calixus. Unknown to the Amalafians, though, is the fact that among the acolytes in the King's Court are a few waiting the command of their true Recongregator Masters to remove the barriers of change and let the transformation of Acreage begin. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Recongregator plots and secrets for today. As far as this faction of the Inquisition goes, I am gonna be making at least one or at most two videos on them, and then we will move on to something else. Either way, what are your thoughts about these inquisitorial secrets? Do you like the Recongregators in any way, shape or form? Or do you think they're just as wacky as the other radical factions of the Inquisition? Let us know what your thoughts and opinions are in the comments below as usual. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot for watching, and I wish you all a great and peaceful day. The Emperor Protects